Well, I was backing my beautiful town car up this morning, and I happened to notice this just before I pulled out of the driveway. Yep, some type of fluid doesn't look good. Let's check her out. Well, there were no homicides in the neighborhood last night, and I didn't run over my neighbor's dog. Well, I hopped up under the car, and there's a little part underneath there. It's the power steering pressure sensor, and the fluid seems to be coming from there. That fluid is power steering fluid coming from there. So let's go in and order the parts and see if we can fix this. I think I can. As with anything, there's pros and cons. Ordering online, pros are you get it for about half price. The cons are you got to wait 48 hours. For me, I can wait 48 hours. Well, this is the part, kind of simple, and I got a shot of it from the other side so you can see the two prongs that will connect the electrical. What you're gonna need for this job is two 19 millimeter wrenches. One of them right here, and I have another one. And what that's for is, one of them is gonna go right on here like this to take it off. And the other 19 millimeter that you're gonna need this guy is going to be, well, you'll see it when we get underneath the car. It holds the part so it, you don't destroy the bigger part that this is connected to. As you can see, I got the car up on the ramp and on the back part of the tires there, I'm going to chalk it with this deal right here. Chalk it means I'm going to make it so it can't roll. These are cheap little plastic, but you know what? You don't want that tire rolling back. I also put the parking brake on. Just for a little added safety, I put another jack stand there and there. Plus the pack, those things can hold a ton of weight. Plus these are, we're talking tons. It's just, you know what? It's, it's better to have more than not enough underneath there. Okay, let me show you what part of the car this repair is gonna take place. It's underneath, it's right about here in front of the wheels on the passenger side, if I could take a rod right now and jam it right down through here to the bottom, that's where the area that we're going to be working at. It is totally accessible. It couldn't be easier. It's like a dream because sometimes you can be in some tough spots, but this one, piece of cake. Okay, I hope you can see okay. You pull your finger right here. You got to take off this connector. Push it and wiggle it and boom, it comes off. So to get that out of the way and we're gonna break this right here with our wrenches. I got them right here. By the way, this was an 18 millimeter here and a 19. So the 19's on here. I don't know if you can see that good, but I'm just gonna put this guy on here and crack it. Oh, there it is, it's cracked. Couldn't have been easier. Get my hand out of the way, spin this bad boy off and there shouldn't be much fluid coming out of it because I think I drained most of it out already. Well, I didn't do it. It decided to do it without me. So we spin that guy off and there she is. Right there. Not much to her. I got my handy dandy one that we showed you. My new guy right here. And I'm gonna put her on. Spins around like a dream. Obviously those threads are nice and uh, moist. I'll take my 19 millimeter and my 18. This one holds back here. Just give it a little bit of a love here. I don't want to give it too much because, you know, it didn't come off, you know, from the factory. It wasn't that tight. Give it a one little tiny more here. Little cute little thing there. Cute. All right, that's it. I'm just going with that. That's all I'm putting on this. I'm gonna snap this guy back in here. I think I got it upside down. You heard it click? I heard it click, it's on there, and that's it. How do you like my gloves, by the way? A seven mil, seven ply, beautiful. We'll clean that up a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the fluid. Well, here's the old one. 
as you can see, um, well, I can tell there's it really no hard failure. Every, it's a solid piece of brass. I can't see anywhere where it failed. Um, it could have been coming from that O-ring, this wore out, that O-ring that's on there, and, and that's all it needed to be replaced. But since you're underneath there, and it's a $29 part, why take a chance? Just replace the new one, because if you took it to a mechanic, it's 350 bucks. So replace the whole thing. Okay, now that we got that installed, it's time to put back the fluid. And the book says to use Mercon ATF. Mercon is, is a, I guess, for Ford. I think Dextron is for like Chevys. This is a multi-combination uh, one, so it's it's good for this Ford. The ATF, which kind of scared me a little bit, not being a car guy, it says ATF, it's not alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Nope, it stands for automatic transmission fluid. So I'm putting transmission fluid in the power steering because that's what it calls for. So uh, the next thing, I'll show you. I'm going to put it in here, pour it in. I'm not going to pour it all the way up to the max line, and I'll tell you why in a second. Let me see if I can get a good pour without uh, theirs for my bartending days. I'll take a little bit of that on there, and I'll stop it right about there. Just a little bit more to the minimum. Maybe a little bit more. Now, it says to check it at operating temperature of the engine so since there's nothing in there at all I don't want to grind it without anything so I'll put a little bit in I'll put the cap back on we'll run it through a series of events by turning the wheel left and right let it get up the room temperature or operating temperature then we'll come back and if we need to add more I want to get it you know like kind of between those two and then we'll be golden okay now we're going to get her off the uh, ramps here you gotta Remove these first. There's one on each side. If you don't, you're not going up the ramps. So there you can see it says uh, Mercon ATF. So uh, just to verify that, that's what you're putting in there. And it says down here, you know, uh, what we need to do is start the engine, let it run until it reaches operating temperature. That's what we're doing now. And then it says we want to add a little bit at a time. But before we do that, it says, while the engine is at idle, turn the steering wheel left and right several times. So let's do that. And uh, we're gonna turn the steering wheel several times, like it says. I'm gonna turn it to that way, all the way, and then I'm gonna turn it back all the way, several times. That's one. That's two revolutions. We'll do three, and then one more all the way to this way, and all the way back. That's three full revolutions. Okay, and by the way, it really feels smooth, so I think I'm in good shape. I'll shut it off, and we'll go from here. Okay, now that we had her all warmed up, I cranked her back and forth. This is the final add we're gonna do. We're gonna add a little bit, and I'm gonna put her right between the minimum and max, if I can. I'm trying to look on the side. Little, oh, it doesn't take much. Doesn't take much. I think I put in a little too much, but I'll show you what I can do. Take my beautiful extractor tool here. You know, you can get this on any, any street corner in any major city where all the crack people are at. They're all laying all over the ground. Take that and I'll pull that much out. And that ought to do it perfect. Okay, this is one final check. After the car's been running for about 5-10 minutes, I check to make sure there's nothing underneath it. It seems to be holding like it's working A-OK. -okay. So we are back in business. Well, that about wraps it up from here. Really not a big job at all. One little part, nothing to it. Save yourself 350 bucks, and it's really not that hard. Like I said, I'm just a regular backyard mechanic. Nothing, nothing special, but uh, if I can do it, you can do it. So uh, we'll see you later on. I can fix that.